All right, this is take two. Uh, a small thunderstorm came. But I had 14 minutes of me rambling about stuff here that uh, there's no way I was gonna get this project into one reasonable length video. So we're gonna try again. So this barn was built in 1961 by Walter Mackey. He was a welder at the Erie Mine. Had Hereford cows. Um, in, in the shed part there, it's concrete, there's gutters in it. It looks like it was set up for a tie stall dairy barn. He actually would bring his Herefords in winter time and they were tied in those tie stalls, um, comfort stall style stanchions they had. That's the kind of setup he had. I don't know how many cows he ever had. I don't think it was a whole lot. Maybe like I got 10, a dozen, somewhere in there. So this barn is 24 feet wide, 40 feet long. The shed part of it, 24 feet by 40 feet long. It's not a huge barn. Um, they used to put the hay in through those doors. Uh, there was never a loft floor in here. Um, they went up on a hay rope. They had a, um, the bale grabbers, you push down over a couple of bales. They got the dogs on the bottom, pull out the other end of the barn, a little, little spot up there, plywooded where the hay rope went through. And it was, you know, slide the spear down over them on a trailer, a couple of bales, fly them in. They'd hit the trip on the track up there and fall into the barn. Carry him out the little door on the side, feed the cows. I'm sure he probably fed them outside some. So what we're trying to do here, last year I had the bull and the steer out back where they were out of the wind. Uh, cows we stuffed in, tie stalls, uh, calf pen, couple other pens that are, are in there like stalls. Uh, one was set up for pigs made out of an old horse trailer. And be uh, this one here to steel this, uh, steer calf is bottle calves living in here right now made this out of an old trailer greatest pig pen ever no pigs have ever escaped um, but you can stuff a couple cows in each one when it's 30 below and the wind is howling out there but this ain't working real good we got to have some way to get the cows in out of the wind someplace so what we are doing is I'm going the back part of this barn. So it will be like 16 by 24, just a run-in shed. Uh, is it ideal? No. Can I make it work? Yes. Uh, I got windows and stuff, the things that were left here. When I bought this place, a lot of stuff was left here. He left me with all kinds of things. Uh, I brought plenty of my own junk. So... When I bought this place 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago now, um, spring of 12, the guy I bought it from, he was moving out as I was moving in. The papers had been signed. I own the place. Um, I brought a load of stuff. He, he had this shed site all cleaned out. He was packing a U-Haul, packing stuff in his camper trailer, packing stuff on a car hauler. I brought a load of stuff up from Michigan. I was still living in town, renting a house. Um, I hauled a load of stuff up. A days off, I was running down to Michigan hauling stuff up that was gonna need to be here. And we were sticking it in a, in a shed. So the first load I haul here, I unload it and the guy I bought the place from, he comes out and he goes, well, I got something that I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't want to say anything about until you own the place, which I thought was a little odd, but all right. So he goes, come here and see this. So we came from the shed side of the bar and we walked through that door. We came in here. He comes in the back over here. Takes this uh, pallet right here, a plywooded pallet that was laying on the floor back here, and he lifts it up. And 
he shows me this. He goes, I've been working on this in secret. Nobody knows, not, not, none of my friends, none of the neighbors, nobody knows about it. So what he did, he built a bomb shelter. That's what he called it. He rented a mini excavator, brought it in this barn, dug a hole, threw the spoils out to the side, and then concreted the floor and built the block, block walls. So when he flipped the cover up, he goes, ah, it's a little bit of moisture gets down in there. It must have run under the walls this winter and flooded the barn floor and got in there. Well, I thought that was odd right off the bat, but um, the thing fills with water. The, the floor of this, he did this, we had a dry stretch, right? When I moved up here, there was a few years of dry, kind of like we just came through again. He built this during a couple of very dry years and it's just the water table is higher than uh, what the floor of this thing is. So I pumped it down with, uh, I get a sump pump down there. Uh, we tore this off, started cleaning this up so we can do something about this. But this is seven feet wide. Let's see if we can get, get in there a little bit. I was down there before doing the, knocking some holes in the block. Nice echo. It's seven feet wide and six and a half feet tall. So you can stand up in there. Um, I want to, I, I don't want it to be a dry well and be a, you know, a swamp in here. So we would bash some walls in it. That piece of PVC pipe laying down there, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, it, it goes through the floor in the corner, which, hey, that gives us some communication with the water, so. His, what he said, what he said when he showed me that, his exact words were, well, if the nukes start flying, my recommendation would be to bucket three feet of dirt on top of this whole floor, and that should protect you from the radiation pretty well. Well, if the nukes start flying, we got a lot bigger problems than that. Uh, I'm not sure I want to be around for that. Um, but I'd rather keep beef from freezing to death right now is what, uh, what I'm looking at. So it sits on railroad ties. Um, the, the, the roof, the roof of it is railroad ties with a rubber membrane over it. Um, I dug down to the ties last year and poked with a screwdriver and those ties are about shot. Um, sure, they're creosoted railroad ties, but... So I don't know if I can cave in part of that block. Um, like I said, it's, it's 15 feet long. So it comes right to about the middle of this door here. You can see the outline of it here. I got a local guy that I know gonna haul me some fill that he pulled out of a job. Um, pretty reasonable. So he's gonna dump it outside there and I just gotta move a few things. I gotta move that hay bale and a mower and a few things and we're gonna bucket it in here. Um, I, the old barn, the old door was laying on the floor here to pile square bales on and old door over there that came with the place and some other peeled up these boards and stuff that we had here to pile hay on and uh, oh, what a dusty mess. Ugh. But once he gets the material here, said it won't, it won't be too long. He'll get, gets a loader back toward his house. He'll, he'll uh, haul, it up, haul it here for me. Need about 25 yards to fill that hole. Uh, we're just gonna take the, put a chain on a loader and some kind of hook set up and we're just gonna cave this in. Um, start pulling those ties and let it, let it collapse in front of us. Um, and then fill it up with his fill dirt. It's gonna settle a bunch, but that's fine. It's just dirt floor. We'll put the cows in here this winter. Clean a bed pack out. Um, 
I actually probably gonna dig this floor down once we do this. I'm gonna rake some of this mill feed, this crushed rock. Rake this back over that so I can get it down. So I'm, I don't want manure and bed pack up into these, into the wood here. And for the time being, it'll work. Um, so take one was way too long. I'm at 10 minutes already explaining this. Um, I'll knock it off here and when we got this ripping the floor out and dumping the dirt in, I'll bring you back. We'll get a little bit of that. We'll make a video out of this. The bomb shelter in the barn. Well, we're by no means done with this project, but the uh, removal of the ceiling of the bomb shelter the or floor of the barn or whatever we want to refer to it uh, as was a ton of fun last night um great great dust and mold so i put 20 yards of clay rock fill stuff that the good part of it is it packs pretty good. Um, a little hard to pack with the tractor, but once I got it kind of established over the edge, I could just sort of work my way down there and got it in. I thought I was gonna have to dump, maybe dump two, three buckets and push with the 40, but it was all fine and dandy. Then I got some, yeah, it's a coarse sand. something decent that'll spread on top of it that other stuff was pretty rough but it filled the hole and it packed in pretty tight so it's gonna settle yet um but here's the way it is now that i got this far i'm gonna clean out all the way around there get the floor cleaned off and i got some more of that there's still some more of the sand out there bucket it in feather it off a bed pack on top of sand like this isn't too bad you kind of get a you kind of get a layer that you can peel it off with this isn't going to be the most fun thing in the world to clean manure out of but I got 25 yards of material in there, counting as sand, so it will do the job. Uh, you're probably tired of looking at this mess in this dark barn. I was gonna cut hay when I come home from work last night for tomorrow. Uh, chance of rain. I get up to look at the weather this morning. No, all the rain chance is gone. Well, I'll knock the oats down when I get home tonight. We'll bale and wrap it tomorrow. If it's good tomorrow, I can cut hay. Four hours after the all clear forecast, not her saying it's going to rain tonight. It looks like it and it feels like it. Uh, great guesses there. So we'll see. We may have some weather coming up here. We can make some dry hay while I'm off here. I sure hope so. So you didn't get to see much of the actual bomb shelter removal, but now you know the story of the bomb shelter in a barn.